In my last video with you, I talked about making the most of your dash, that period of service that you give to the United States Air Force. Clearly, I thought, as your Air Force civil engineer, that I would have the opportunity to serve three to four years like many of the 23 men who have come before me. The Air Force had other plans, but I wanted to take just a minute to tell you how proud I was to have that opportunity and to thank you for all the things that you did uh, during that period of time. First, I want to start with our deployed airmen, folks who made a tremendous difference downrange in Afghanistan and other locations around the world. I think when the historians document the dash of Air Force engineers serving in deployed locations in Iraq and Afghanistan, what they write will be a story of honor, of service, and of sacrifice. The contributions that you've made will certainly stand the test of time. To the men and women who work every day at our squadrons, both uniformed and civilian professionals, you make a difference every day. Times are tough and you've had a lot of challenges this past year between sequestration, civilian furloughs, limited dollars, changing policies, you've had to adapt and overcome. And I am very, very proud of the work that you've done and the difference that you've been able to make each and every day. I know that my squadron motto at Spangdalem was can do, will do, have done. I wanna thank you for doing just that at your installations around the world. To the men and women who have been working very, very hard at our major command, AFKEC, and on the air staff here in the Pentagon, thank you for your contributions and most importantly, for your adaptability and flexibility. You've had a lot of curveballs thrown your way over the past uh, nine months, but you've adapted. You've figured out ways to continue pressing forward in the same type of challenging environment that those at our installations have felt but you figured out a way to provide the right guidance and the right resources at the right time for them to support the mission and get the job done. Thank you for all you do, and it has been a distinct honor for me to serve as your Air Force civil engineer. But now I need to ask for your help. I need you to provide Brigadier General Tim Green the same level of passionate, enthusiastic support that you provided to me. He is absolutely the right leader at the right time in this place in our Air Force history. He's commanded two times, both at the squadron and the group level. He served behind the glass doors, working as assistant executive officer to the chief of staff of the Air Force. He supported two COCOM commanders over in the European theater. And he has twice led an A A7 staff, uh, both at Air Mobility Command and most recently at Air Combat Command. Tim has absolutely the right leadership, the right experience, to step in and make a difference. And how do I know that? He followed me at Air Mobility Command as the A7 and did a phenomenal job, taking that staff further than I ever could have hoped. So I have absolute confidence that he is gonna take our civil engineering community and our Air Force exactly where it needs to be over the next three to four years. Abraham Lincoln once said, it's not the years in the life, but the life in the years. I want to close by saying thank you once again. Thank you for making my time as the Air Force Civil Engineer one that was in fact full of life. And it was full of life because of the passion, the energy, and the enthusiasm that each of you brought to the job every day. Whether or not I had the opportunity to meet you in person, to shake your hand and say thank you, or I only felt your contributions from the work that I did in the Pentagon, you absolutely made a difference. And I was humbled and honored to have the opportunity to serve as your Air Force civil engineer. Thank you for all you do and keep up the great work.